Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 11 of ADO.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about loading two or more tables into your data set and giving these tables a meaningful name, binding the tables in the data set to user interface data bound controls like grid view using the tables collection property of the data set object. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 8, 9 and 10 of this video series. Now within SQL Server, I have two tables, TBL product inventory and TBL product categories in the sample database. Now I want to create a stored procedure that is capable of returning two result sets. So I'm going to wrap these two select statements inside a stored procedure. So create procedure. Let's call this SP get data as begin end. So let's execute that. Command completed successfully. To execute the stored procedure, double click, uh, highlight the name of the stored procedure and click execute. So this stored procedure is now returning two result sets. We want to display these two result sets within an ASP.NET web application, obviously using a SQL data adapter and data set objects. Okay, so let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop two grid view controls onto the web form. So grid view one, grid view 2. So we have two of them. Let's auto format them. So one grid view has brown sugar theme and let's auto format this. Okay, cool. So we have two grid view controls. Now let's flip to the code behind page. And if you look at the web.config file, I already have a connection string uh, that's pointing to my local installation of SQL Server and to the sample database. And the name of the connection string is dbcs. So let's read the connection string from web.config file. So string connection string is equal to, we use the configuration manager class, which is present in system.configuration namespace. Make sure you import that. And we can use the connection strings property pass it the name of the connection string, which in our case is dbcs that's present in the web.config file dot connection string. So we have the connection string now. So create the SQL connection object. SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection. And the constructor of the SQL connection class expects a connection string. So pass that. Okay, so we have the SQL connection object. Now let's create SQL data adapter. And we have seen working with SQL data adapter, SQL connection, and reading the configuration from uh, you know, web.config file in the previous sessions of this video series. So if you have not already watched them, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. Okay, so SQL data adapter DA is equal to new SQL data adapter. And what we want to execute is a stored procedure that we have already created. Copy the name of the stored procedure. And the second parameter that we want to pass to the SQL adapter object is the connection upon which you want to execute that stored procedure, which in our case is this connection object that we have already created. And the next important thing, tell the data adapter that it is executing a stored procedure by using the command type property of the select command. Okay, so we need to create a data set object and we already know a data set is an in-memory representation of your database. It can store tables and the relationships uh, between them just like a database would store them in the physical hard disk. Okay, data set is an in-memory representation. So data set DS is equal to new data set and we can call the fill method of the data adapter which is going to automatically open the connection execute the stored procedure load the data into the data set and close the connection immediately for us so data adapter dot fill the data set so now when we actually run this project what's going to happen you know this stored procedure will be executed and you know that that stored procedure is actually returning two result sets Okay, so both of these result sets will be loaded into this data set. Now, if you remember on the grid view control, we have uh, on the web form, we have two grid view controls and we want to bind the products data onto the first grid view control and the categories data to the second grid view control. Okay, so 
and both these result sets will be loaded into this data set object. So what I'm doing here is saying grid view one dot data source is equal to data set and grid view one dot data bind along the same lines grid view two dot data source is equal to the data set and grid view two dot data bind so now if we run it as it is okay as you might expect look at this we are setting the data source for both of the grid view controls as the data set and look at the output you know both of the grid view controls are displaying only the first table which is products data but our intention is actually to store uh, to show product data in one grid view and in the other one categories data the reason why it's happening is uh, because by default the first table within the data set will be used as the data source for the grid view control in case if you set the data set as the data source okay so if you actually put a breakpoint here and then debug the application within the data set you can actually see you know both of the tables getting loaded you know as you stop through so if we put a breakpoint here okay let's let it run through okay now if you look at this data set object it has got a tables property so if you expand the plus sign there is a tables property within the data set and if you look at the tables property it has got two tables within that and if you actually want to look at those tables you can click this magnifying glass and it will show you you know this is look at the name of the table it's called the first table is called table which is showing the product information and the second table is called the you know table one which is nothing but the categories table look at this the table names are first of all they're not meaningful uh, the first table is table second table is table one if you have another third table it, it will be called as table two table three so on and so forth okay which are definitely not meaningful as far as the names are concerned so now when you set this data set as the data source for the grid view control it's going to pick up the first table and set that as the data source for the grid view control that's why both of the grid view controls show the same table when it actually come you know rendered okay so now if you want to specify which table you want to show uh, you know in which grid view control you can use the tables collection property so we can use this tables collection property of the data set object so when i say data set dot you see that tables collection tables property okay and we know that this tables property is going to have two tables so you can either use the integral indexer you know or you can specify the name of the table okay so i want to associate the table at the 0th position meaning the first table with grid view 1 and the second table with grid view 2 okay so now if we run this as you might expect the first table which is the product related information will be shown in the first grid view and the categories in the second grid view control but then using the integral indexers that doesn't really make sense you know the code is not that much readable here so instead what we can do we can use the names of the tables and if you looked at you know in the within the breakpoint we have seen that the name of the first table was table and the name of the second table was table one which are not really meaningful so I can either specify the integral indexer or I can just say table and the other one is called table one that's the second table so I can use these names again if you look at these names these are not very meaningful so what does table and table one mean so if we run the output would be exactly similar except that we are using the names of the tables instead of the integral indexers okay and it is possible for you to actually give meaningful names for these tables within the data set and how do I do that it's very simple you use that you know tables collection property you know that tables of zero will be your products table so tables of zero dot there is a table name property set that to whatever meaningful name that you want 
So let's call it products. And along the same lines, the first table is going to be categories. OK, so now you can actually use these names when binding. So at least it's a little readable now, and hence your code will be maintainable. OK, so now if we run, as you might expect, the output will be exactly the same, except that we have assigned names to the tables within the data set. OK. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.